Hey everyone, Alex here with Nerds at Arts, and today we are going to rank the Destiny DLC. Now before I get on into this video, I want to remind you if you want to become part of our community and get our content early, ad-free, with the ability to submit your questions, comments, and concerns, access to our Discord, shoutouts at the end of every podcast, and so much more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash nerds at odds. And now let's hop on into it. We are going to be ranking all of the major DLC releases, including like the short ones like House of Wolves and Coast of Assize and stuff like that, for Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. So there's nine of them individually. Uh, no seasons are going to be included and stuff like that. So let's hop on into it. So at number 9, from worst to best, number 9, the worst, I think, is Curse of Osiris. There's very little content here. Mercury is a very poor location. There's only one public event to be done there. I didn't like grinding out the weapons. It, it was just, I like Osiris as a character a lot, but it just felt very lackluster, especially since back then there was no seasons to, like, inject content into Destiny. This was what you got for half a year or a whole year this was it was very poor next up is the dark below which was the first dlc for destiny and i remember the time when destiny came out i thought it was going to be a much larger game i thought it was going to be kind of like mass effect uh i, I paid no attention to the pre-release coverage as is obvious by that but i got it played it beat it in a sitting the story i even did the vault of glass which is the only raid i've ever done i did that and then I waited for Dark Below to come out, and Dark Below came out, and it was just a raid and a little bit of story content, and I wasn't into raiding real much. I didn't enjoy the Vault of Glass experience. I don't feel like banging my head against a wall for 15 hours or so. So I played it for like another day, and then I was like, wow, this is very shallow as well, and I didn't enjoy the Dark Below at all either. So next up is Warmind. Uh, Warmind was kind of interesting. Uh, from a small DLC standpoint, there was Icy Hive, which has kind of become a meme now, you know, when they're going to add a new faction in or group in, it's just going to be an old faction with a new skin on it. But Icy Hive, I like Ana Bray, and I like the Mars area you go to. I thought Warmind was pretty solid. It's fine. Next was House of Wolves, which is the one DLC, the one of the small DLCs that I played the most. Because of the um, Prison of Elders kind of horde mode type thing they had. Which I really wish they put back into the game as like a core content thing. Because I, I played Prison of Elders so much uh, when it came out. And I really enjoyed it and I wish they put it back into the game. I don't remember story content or anything from House of Wolves. I just remember playing Prison of Elders. But it is my favorite of the four small DLCs, if for nothing more than I played that mode more than I played any of the other small DLCs. Next, of, next is Rise of Iron, the last uh, expansion for the base Destiny game. And I kind of enjoyed going into the Plaguelands and seeing the SIVA, and I enjoyed the new space you went to, I think Fell went to a keep, perhaps. I enjoyed that space a lot. And, uh... I don't know, I had a lot of fun playing it. There was the moments of Triumph you could complete. Uh, like I said, I didn't run any of the raids with any of these, so I can't give you my opinion on that. But I played a lot of Rise of Iron. I remember enjoying it, and it was a fun experience. Next, at number four, I put Shadow Keep. Uh, the moon location was old, but I enjoyed experiencing it again, though it is not as exciting as some of the newer locations they added in other expansions. Uh, I enjoyed the story of the pyramid ships coming and Eris Morn. I thought that was cool. I even liked the nightmare hunts and all of that content they added. Though it was, a, again, a little shallow on the story front once you beat the main campaign. So I felt a little... Uh, that's why it's lower on this list for me. Number three is Beyond Light. I think Beyond Light added so much to the game. I felt like the single player story experience for Beyond Light is the best it's ever been. The stasis supers are amazing. It's fun to play. Europa is a very interesting map. It has a lot of depth, both literally and figuratively. There's a lot to do on it, and you can go beneath the surface a lot into the Bray Tech facilities. There's just so much to do, and I enjoy the lost sectors on Europa, and they also added the Cosmodrome back in, though as of right now, there's not much to do there, but it added some areas into the game. I wish they added more strikes, crucible maps, and gambit maps. 
maybe some bigger updates towards to the core gameplay experience of Destiny would have been more appreciated. It might have got it higher on this list. Though I kind of thought Destiny was in a fine place before Beyond Light. It didn't save the game or anything. So I think that's why it's below the next two. And our second on my list is the Taken King. And I think I would have put Beyond Light above Taken King. If it isn't for the fact that Taken King saved the first Destiny game. It really injected it with tons of content. You got all those new supers. You got um, Oryx. You got the dreadnought there's a bunch of stuff added and it really uh gave that game like a sh the shot in it arm it needed to survive what had become a very poor experience after a lack of content from house of wolves and the dark below so taking king really revived the game and saved it and there was so much to do that i feel like it definitely earns its second spot on this list now lastly at number one i think forsaken is the best DLC that Destiny has because it first saved Destiny 2. I feel like Destiny 2 was on its way out and Forsaken really gave it a shot in arm like taking King Gear for Destiny 1, really revitalizing the game, which I really hope if they ever do Destiny 3 that it does not continue this cycle of, you know, decent launch, people drop off after doing the content, some small stuff that really doesn't bring everybody back and then a big DLC that, you know, quote unquote saves the game. But Forsaken added a lot of stuff out of the Dreaming City and the Tangled Shore. It added uh, the Spider, which is a cool character. It added the new faction of Forsaken. Um, or whatever they're called. I can't remember what they're called right now. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about. And it added... Uh, I like the story. I like hunting down all the... Like, secondary villains that were henchmen of the main villain. Uh, I don't know if I like them killing Kate off. It, it was, you know, an emotional moment, but it just feels like they couldn't get Nathan Fillion back anymore, so they killed him off. But I really enjoyed Forsaken, and I think that it is the best DLC because it added the most content, and it had a good story, and it really did revitalize Destiny 2 the same way Taken King revitalized Destiny 1. But I feel like Forsaken added more content. So... That's my uh, rankings of the Destiny DLC. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'll probably be putting out uh, maybe another Destiny video at some point talking about the seasons. If I can figure out how I would want to rank them, I'll probably start with the season past seasons. So um, Black Armory, Menagerie, and um, the Gambit one, or whatever it was called. So... Thank you all for listening. Be sure to check out the Nerds at Odds podcast that goes live for free on Fridays. But remember, if you want to get that show four days early, head on over to patreon.com slash nerds at odds. I really appreciate all your support. And I'll see you guys on the next video.